Welcome to the Roxborough House Roundtables. My name is Evan Lane. I'm the faculty coordinator for the All Inspector Center for Public Service. Today our roundtable is Ritual in Greek Life. I turn that to Amanda McQuillan, probably mispronounced it, who is our moderator today. Hi, thank you guys for coming. So um, we are going to be talking about ritual within Greek life and how our values with each organization kind of relate to that. Um, so we're going to go around and introduce ourselves, say which group we're from, and if you have any positions. Um, I do want to start. Yeah, so I'm Rebecca Lane. I'm in Theta Phi Alpha. I'm a senior, and I used to be the group in chair. Um, so I'm Amanda McQuillan. I'm in Theta Phi Alpha. I'm a junior, and I am uh, the president. I'm Keaton Matice. I'm a sophomore. I'm in Theta Phi Alpha, and I'm the chair. I'm Lexi Mariano. I'm in Theta Phi Alpha. I'm a sophomore, and I'm a sister of chair. I'm Christina, I'm secretary and I'm Theta Phi Alpha. My name is Monica, I'm in Theta Phi Alpha, I'm treasurer and I'm a junior. Uh, my name is Rachel, I'm a sophomore, I'm in Theta Phi Alpha and I'm a sunshine junior. Mm -hmm. My name is Kristen Mato, I'm in Theta Phi Alpha and I used to be a main chair. I'm Lori, I'm a senior, I'm in Theta Phi Alpha, and I used to be Sister of Chair. I'm Haley, I'm in Delta Phi Epsilon, I'm a senior, and I used to be Ritualist. I'm Dana Shaparo, I'm Vice President of Programming for Delta Phi Epsilon, and I'm a junior. I'm Taylor, and I'm a junior, and I'm a Delta Phi Epsilon. I'm Steph, I'm in Theta Phi Alpha, and I'm a Carol Chair. I'm Andy, I'm in Theta Phi Alpha, and I'm a sophomore. I'm Kelsey, I'm Theta Phi Alpha, and I'm a senior. I'm Ronella, I'm Theta Phi Alpha, and I'm a junior. Okay, great. All right, so we have a series of about 10 questions. Um, so I will ask the question and we can kind of discuss it with, among ourselves. Um, so the first question we have is what is ritual? Kind of basic to kind of start it off. Um, so I can start, and I guess. Um, Generally, I guess how like a definition in a dictionary would kind of be, would just be like a ceremony um, within an organization that kind of represents their values and um, to induct people, initiate people, um, different painting services. Um, I don't know, I don't want to add on to that. Usually a ritual is something that will bring you closer together. It expresses your values as an organization and it usually explains them well for the new people and for um, the girls or boys who have been in the organization longer to help them remember um, the basics of your Greek life. Um, this is Rebecca, and going along with that, at all the other chapters along um, other schools that have our sorority, we all do the same ritual, so it's really important and it's really cool because you share that kind of bond with people that you don't even necessarily know. Going off of what Rebecca said, I think um, when you meet people from you, the same organization of yours, you automatically have that bond because you are the only ones who know what happens in your rituals and you know all the secrets of them and what is discussed and what happens during them. So I think that's one way to automatically connect with people in the same organization as you. And a common misconception about rituals could be that it's considered something with hazing or really doing things to our members and rituals aren't about that they're really about values like it's nothing about hurting or harming like as many would conceive it to be when they hear like rituals in Greek life like that's what they think of as hazing and us hurting our new members and stuff like that and that's nothing we would do. Okay. Uh, the next question we have is who is responsible for ritual within your chapter? Um, so for ours, it's Caitlin. She's our ritual chair. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to just talk about what you do as a ritual chair. Um, basically, in our rituals, there's stuff we just, like I set it up and I have everything. But I think it would be odd kind of responsible for it because we like carry it with us like, every day and hold up our values and stuff. So. Yeah, for DeFi, we have a ritualist as well. Um, um, we just used to be it, so we can talk about it a little bit. Yeah, as ritualists, I was just responsible for getting everything set up for the night and making sure that all the girls were together and dressed properly and that it could go smoothly as possible so we can all make the connection. Yeah. I think there's a lot more that goes into ritual than 
wouldn't necessarily think, you know, there's a lot more equipment. Um, I remember when I was ritual chair, there would be a bins of things, and we also have a ginormous ritual book that is very detailedly instructed on how to do each thing, you know, how the setup should be, what should everyone's attire be like. I'm sure it's the same for you guys as well. Yeah, it definitely comes with a lot of rules and stuff yeah. you don't expect in a big binder. But yeah. yeah, it's kind of cool though that you have that. And it's a little more serious moment, especially for the new members, because um, we, we use ritual as kind of like milestones for them for yeah. getting into a story, which I'm sure you guys do too. So it's kind of like a special, more serious moment for them and for us because yeah. it's traditions. Can I ask a question, Evelyn? Uh, when you're coming to school, obviously you're coming from a comfortable environment, your high school, your friends, your family, your home, and suddenly you're among strangers in a different place, much more pressure, much more adult situations. How does all of this help comfort that anxiety that you may have coming here or at a university? Um, Say your name. I'm Monica. I think it's comforting because it's creating a bond with girls. Um, sometimes it can be hard when you go away from home to instantly find friends and when you join a sorority, it's you pick your sorority based on your values and girls that you see yourself wanting to be friends with forever. Um, so it makes it easier for you to, um, sororities with the rituals, they like comfort you. Like It's like kind of a comforting feeling to understand what everyone else understands already. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, I'm Kristen. On top of that, um, it also helps girls come out of their shell, too. A lot of freshmen come in, I'm sure, I'm nervous of everything that's going on around them, everything that's new, and the sorority life and the group life will kind of comfort you and bring you up and help you become a leader in your own life. Also, um, this is Rebecca. On a personal note, my um, cousin at Rowan University just got into Theta Phi Alpha. And when she went through her first ritual, she told me that she felt so welcomed and it was very powerful and it made her automatically feel very welcomed into the sisterhood. So that kind of just shows exactly how like, it's very comforting from the very beginning. And I felt the same way when I did it here. I think, well, right. <laughs> going off that, this is Lori. Um, it's also really comforting because um, all your sisters are around you at the moment of ritual. And it just makes you, we do our best to make you feel like welcomed and secure and that like nothing will harm you like everybody has been saying. This is Amanda. Um, I think when you come to college for the first time as a freshman um, or if you join, you know, your sophomore year, I still think you're kind of figuring out who you are and um, where you want to go in life and who the person you want to be. And I think through ritual within Greek life, I think it's a great way to kind of find those values and those beliefs that you want to. Um, you know, lean on later on after college and stuff because these will go on forever and I think it helps build that character and that personality that you do want to have. Yeah, we always say on Monica that like our values are really great for our new girls. Like sometimes we can see that they're like a little bit lost or they need help um, and we see that the sorority will give them the guidance they need through college and for their career path because it does help you take on like leadership and responsibility that sometimes like isn't always found when you first come to college. Great. Okay, our next question is, why do you think our founders wanted to have ritual? Um, I'll, I'll talk. Um, I'm Rachel, and um, I think it just is very special and specific to like each sorority, each, you know, they each have their own um, rituals and their own ways of doing things, so I think it just makes it really specific to that sorority and um, it just makes you feel like you're more a part of it because you all know this ritual and not every, no one else outside of the sorority does. Um, this is Rebecca. Um, going along with having ritual from the very beginning, like we were founded in 1912. Our ritual has been the same since then with minor changes due to anything that, you know, they would have to change from now to then. But other than that, we've been doing the same ritual since they founded it in the 1900s. So, I think that's really cool and it also keeps tradition so it's like that's what's tying us to the people who have been in it for this whole time over 100 years that's what keeps everyone tied together yeah um this is dana from dfa um we were founded in 1917 so that's crazy that you bring that up because it is from the 1900s and i think um something as like sacred as a ritual and why they really started is it because it makes you feel like you're part of something much bigger than yourself um so even go back to the last question why girls feel more comfortable being in a sorority, it's because you're a part of something much bigger than just 
yourself now as you're part of a whole organization? This is Amanda. I think that ritual is kind of like um, the glue that kind of keeps the organizations together in a way because it holds the values and something that we keep on going back to. Um, and I think without the rituals, we would be okay, but I think these kind of bring us back down to earth and they keep us grounded and they keep reminding us over and over again, you know, why we are in each specific organization. Um, yeah. um, this is Rachel. Um, also, because ritual is something that never changes, you know, <coughs> members change, things always change, um, but ritual is always something that stays the same and throughout the years, I think that's pretty cool too because we're, you know, we might not do things the same way that they did back when they when everything first started, but ritual is something that's con that's consistent and it doesn't change. Yeah, absolutely. This is Amanda. Um, I think society might have been completely different back when all of our organizations started and you know the ways of life have been totally different but because we still uphold the same values and the same beliefs and that we continue these rituals we can relate to them on that level even you know 1912 and 1970 work they're completely different than 2016 um, but we can still keep those values that our founders did have and you know they obviously made them for a reason I think even on that, like to go even maybe make it a little more closer to terms, is like even since our chapter has been founded, we've been on campus for three years. DeFi's been on campus for, um, oh God, I don't remember, a long time. <laughs> I think it's 20. Yeah, 20 yes, sorry. Um, like even since we've started, the culture of our sororities have each changed. Um, the girls going through it and when the alumni come back, like they still remember, we have alumni come back for initiation, which is a ritual. They still remember the exact same ritual, but the chapter itself has changed and grown also. And it's just a great way to relate ourselves back to even just our founding members on our chapter. Okay, so the next two questions kind of go hand in hand. Um, what does having a ritual mean to you? And then what does having a ritual mean to your organization? I may ask a question. Mm -hmm. um, again, going back to what I saw, because I see students from a different side. Uh, you're taken from your families, you know, you're leaving your families behind, your sisters and best friends. Is this sort of a substitution, becomes a pseudo family or a new kind of family? For the radio, everyone is nodding their heads. Okay. <laughs> so, um, if anyone want to expound upon that? Yeah, I'll say something. Um, I'm Christina. Uh, in high school, and like, all of elementary school, I guess I've, I played soccer since I was in first grade, so high school I had a really strong connection to my soccer team, so not like coming to college and not sticking with the sport and not having like that kind of like team, like joining the sorority, like substituted for that I think, um, and like being able to connect to them on a deeper level like through ritual I think was even deeper than like a, just a friend base or like a soccer team base, so. Yeah, along with that, this is Rebecca, um, to go with that, I agree that it's deeper than a friendship because a lot of times when you have a friendship, especially in high school, you don't really have like a necessary reason to stay friends with people if you don't have to. If you go separate ways, you start, you know, going on your own path, you really don't have any like connection tie. But being in a sorority is more like a family because of your ritual, so you have reason to continue, you know, working out your differences with people if you even have them. Um, and anything like that. So I would compare it more to like a family. And some people even don't have great family lives. And we we all have talked about it in our story because we're all pretty close. And it can substitute that for an even better reason. Yeah, and um, this is Dana for Defy. Um, it's funny that you say the word family because once you get in, you get like a big sister. Everyone mm -hmm. knows the term big and they hear that. And then you call that your family. So within the sorority, we each have our families and they're tied through different trees and such. And um, it's it is, it is kind of a substitution for a family once you come to college, because when you think you come when you're 18 years old, you're completely, your life completely changes, and you're in this new place with all new people. Um, so it's nice to even have that word around you, to say family, or sisterhood, and your sisters. Um, so yeah, I think it's really important. This is Monica. Um, even like tying back to it, a lot of girls say their sorority is their home away from home. You'll see that throughout the country. Every girl will probably post it, saying, my home away from home, like I'm so happy to found my home. Like the sorority is such a great place to just like be comfortable. Um, it's a place where girls come to like 
share about themselves and I know we do a lot of um, not necessarily rituals but you know, like retreats where we just talk with each other and like we kind of like go on a deeper like not just sitting there talking about your day like you're sitting there talking about like why like what's going on in your life and like for me personally like ritual means so much to me because it was like a way for me to connect to these girls originally before really getting to know them like it was my way of finding my sisters and it was my way of like being able to finally talk to girls and like not feel like I have to be a certain way like it showed me that we're all the same and we're all based on the same values and no one will be judging you or anything like that because that's what we're based on is like friendship and loyalty and all those other things. Yeah, I think, uh, this is Amanda, I think that ritual can kind of be intimidating at first, especially going through your November process. I know I was, and I'm sure a lot of you would agree, um, but I was ritual chair last year, and when you actually sit down and you actually read the rituals, because sometimes I think you kind of get lost in the ceremony itself, and it's kind of hard to really take in the words that are being said and the promises that you're keeping, um, and I think when I would go back and read them and kind of review it, I take it in more and I appreciate it a lot better and um, I think we try to encourage everyone to kind of read the rituals and really absorb it as much as um, you can and now being present I hold I run the rituals I guess you could say um, and I think that kind of gives me a new perspective on it as well because I get to watch all the new members and their facial expressions are <laughs> kind of funny to watch um, uh, but yeah I think it's just a great way to bring everyone together and I think every ritual is you grow a deeper bond with everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is Dana, and I think this is like the first year we actually did rituals during formal recruitment, mm -hmm. um, during the recruitment like week um, for the potential new members. Um, and I, at first, I was a little skeptical about it because it was like such a private thing for us. You know, I'm sure you guys too. So it was a little odd to like open up to girls that weren't in the sorority yet. Um, but it actually ended up being like a really positive, positive night. Um, I think for everyone because the girls really got to see like. During ritual, you really talk about what your values are in the sorority and how why we're here to be like better, stronger women. Um, so I think it was really nice for girls, even not being in the sorority yet, to see what we do and why we do that and why it's important for us to have rituals. Um, this is Rebecca. Yeah, we we have been doing the ritual during our recruitment just because that's part of our national recruitment process, and it's basically like the only open ritual that we really do. Mm -hmm. um, and they, yeah, the potential new members get to see it. And I think it's really important because like you said, like it's their first look into like what we actually do. And even if they don't end up becoming a sister, like I think they'll have a new appreciation for what it is we do. Because mm -hmm. they get to see like at least part of what we're about. This is Monica. And actually, Caitlin could probably explain. We have two types of rituals within our sorority. We have open ritual and closed ritual. Um, and I think it's very interesting to see how we do have two different types. Um, I don't know if you want to explain it better. Um, I'm Caitlin, and basically open ritual means anyone could be there and like witness it, even like not in the sorority in a closed ritual, it was just my sisters in the sorority. So our potential new member, or uh, the closed uh, rituals can only be seen by sisters, alumni, and new members who have already like um, given their, I guess, value oath to <laughs> our sorority. Um, but we do have one or two open rituals that allow um, people who are from the outside to see a little bit into what we do. Um, I would say they're not as in deep, um, as depth as the other ones, but they still give you like a little like taste of everything. Um, okay, so I guess just really back to the questions before we kind of got off topic a little bit. Um, what does a ritual mean to you? having a ritual, me too. Um, I think, like, this is Dana. Um, from what I said before, I already said this, but it's definitely like being a part of something bigger than yourself because you're all there. Um, we each have costumes that do we, we do in our rituals, but it's kind of just this feeling of togetherness and doing something together. So it's definitely, for me, it's being a part of something bigger than myself. This is Amanda. Um, I think a ritual kind of guides you down the path of where you should be heading in life. And I kind of find myself thinking about our creed and the oaths that we take during our rituals. Um, subconsciously, but sometimes consciously as well. Just being like, okay, like I should watch what I do, watch what I say. And I think it goes towards your attitude and your behavior on campus, but then also, you know, in the work life or in your personal life as well. Um, that's why I think that this discussion is really great because it kind of reminds us 
because you know we all get caught up in our lives every day and we kind of forget about the values that we should be upholding um, because of the letters that we do wear. I don't know anything about sororities or fraternities because when I went, no one was in them, but that was back in the Stone Age. But when you're doing this, I know I'm not allowed to ask the specifics, but you're pledging not only your your behavior or attitude towards your sisters, but also to the outside as well? It's like a values. It's like you're pledging your values. Morals. like Yeah, morals. Like um, we're based on like loyalty and trust. Um, those are like common things everyone can know. Um, and we, we just discuss it probably. Like, it's like a discussion. This is Rebecca. Um, a lot, thing that we tell our new members a lot of time is you're always wearing your letters. If you're not wearing your letters, you're still wearing your letters because people know that you're in a certain organization. So like, like oh, that girl's in Theta Phi. And like, mm -hmm. then if you do something, it makes the entire group look a certain way, which is either good or bad. So like one person's actions can affect all of us. So by having these letters and like wearing it around campus, people start to recognize that. And then your values start to reflect on us. I think especially at a smaller school, everyone knows your face. They might not necessarily know which specific sorority that you're in, but I think no matter what, we would want everyone to have a positive outlook on both of them, no matter you know, if someone might misconceive you know, whether which one you're in. Um, and I think that's why we always have to kind of watch our actions and watch our behaviors at a smaller school, um, because you're always wearing letters, because everybody knows your face. Um, Hi, this is Lori. Um, going off that, uh, being in a sorority is a commitment that you make like from the very start, and um, like wearing your letters is really important because it like identifies you and then makes you a part of your big group. But also, um, you have to you know watch your actions, and then when you're in ritual, um, you're reminded of why you're in such a big group. Okay, so that kind of goes off with the next question is what do you do each day to include your organization's ritual in your daily life? Um, this is Amanda. I think it just kind of takes little things, you know, holding the door for someone or thanking the Ram Van bus driver every day. Um, those are kind of just small things that I do, but then also what you're, how you're approaching someone, um, you know, maybe in your class or someone that you work for just kind of how you're saying things and um, how you just go about everyday life. You don't want to walk around with like a sourpuss on your face or, you know, um, having a bad attitude all of that time. I think if you can keep a positive outlook, I think that kind of relates back to having that sisterhood and that um, those morals that we do talk about during our rituals. Because being in a big organization is supposed to better you and make you a stronger, more beautiful woman. So it's really important to, you know, remi remind yourself that you're part of something bigger than yourself. Yeah, this is Kristen. Um, yeah, it, when I look around myself at ritual, I feel like I have role models around me. And I also feel like I am a role model for everyone else. And the more you give, the more you get to the thing. So it's, just, it's a very empowering feeling. Um, the next question we have is, why do you think it's difficult for some members in your chapter to live by your creed of or ritual? Um, hi, this is Lori. Um, maybe some challenges of being reminded of our values are uh, the challenges that happen in everyday life. There's temptations and um, things like that all around us, but um, being reminded of our values like during either meetings or rituals like really like helps you keep grounded and reminded that, um, yes, I'm making the right decisions. This is Monica, and I also think it can be hard. College is a tough time. Like we've talked about, like you're leaving home, you're coming to a new place, and it's also a time where people view kind of like as an almost experimental time. Like you're allowed to get a, like do what you want. Um, so it can be hard to follow them, but that's why we always do come back and recite like our creed and we talk about it and we do the ritual is to remind you and bring you back down because sometimes you will um, not follow the values or the ideas that you're given from ritual and it's just about finding it, your way back to it and holding it true to you because it's not only used for in college, it's used for the rest of your life. Um, so it's not, it can be hard during college but I think it sticks with you even better when you graduate and you go and start working and 
getting married or whatever you're going to do after you graduate, it helps you like build a better foundation for your life. Um, yeah, this is Jennifer. Dufay. Um, I think in this day and age, there's so much pressure put on young women. Um, Dufay, you just had their ANA degree like highlighted, you know, all the stuff that really young women have to go through. Um, and I think it's it's tough. We're put under a lot of pressure in this day and age to be this perfect girl, to be going to school, to get a job, to have a family, to have a boyfriend, to look great all the time. Um, and I think it's tough. You lose yourself in it sometimes. So I think it's great that we all have a place to go where we can really. Um, get back to our values and be a part of an organization that really pushes us to be great women for ourselves. So Amanda, um, I think that kind of going off of what they both said was that college is kind of like a stepping stone, like you don't have your parents anymore, but they're still kind of there if you need it, but you're kind of figuring out who you are before you enter the real world, quote unquote. Um, and I think that you're still figuring out who you are as a person and what values that you want to lead every day in your life and how you want to have everyone perceive you. Um, but if you can keep going back to those those rituals and those values that we have, and then you try to incorporate them just a little bit every day, eventually it's just going to be part of what you do all the time and how you act. And I think it's important to always keep going back to it no matter what. Yes. Sure. Um, hi, I'm right here, but um, I was in a sorority at my undergrad school, so I've been one for now. Um, not one of your chapters. Um, how do you find you all, obviously, have a but you all probably have traditions that are actually, I'm sure you could um, probably on your websites. Um, do you find that those help you reinforce um, your ritual? I mean, we have badge day coming up. I'm an alumni, so like, when you guys were talking, I was thinking, you know, like I got away from, you know, you get away from stuff, but you, you put that badge on, you think, oh, I'm gonna, well, what was I thinking? So, do, do your traditions help you with your, reinforce your ritual, even when you're, say, on spring break or you're doing something else, you're thinking, like you see something, you're like, oh, that flower or that that symbol, like, does that help you with your rituals? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, we personally have to, at State by Alpha, we have a chapter meeting every week and we wear badge attire, which is business casual, so we have to wear our badges. Um, and I think that kind of is a great tradition because it prepares you for a job or you know an interview, but then also gives you that professional structure every week. You know, um, We don't all dress like that all the time because that would be just really hard. But um, <laughs> with that day coming up, we're going to definitely participate in that. I think that would be great because I don't think a lot of people really know that sororities and fraternities have badges and what necessarily that they stand for. Um, and I know each one's different. Each one means differently, uh, different things. Um, but, that, but then also with like the symbols, you know, we have the right book white rose and the, we have our penguin and uh, our sapphire and our pearls and when you see those little things in your daily life it things click in your mind and you automatically start thinking of your organization as a whole. Um, yeah, this is Rebecca. I also think that um, wearing a badge or anything that reminds of your sorority but specifically your badge that's very important especially to us is that it gives you confidence. It can start kind of sounding like when you're like trying to live up to all these values and stuff that it's like something that like you're scared that you're not going to like you know live up to or anything like that but I think it's more like you're trying to do it for yourself and it gives you confidence like I said so like if you're going to like a job interview I know a lot of girls will wear their badge to like a job interview because automatically it makes you feel like comfortable like you're used to wearing this like we wear it once a week at meeting because we're wearing bad attire we have practice wearing that kind of you know attire so it's like something that we're very comfortable with. Good question. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I have, uh, what does it mean to be a values-based organization? You kind of touched on it already. Um, this is Dana. Um, I think um, a lot of misconception about sororities is that we're here for the social aspect and we're not anything more than hanging out on the weekends and hanging out with fraternities and with each other. And I think having these values and even talking about it right now is awesome. So people know what we're doing. You know, we all have our like philanthropies that we're really involved in, um, our service, our sisterhood, our scholarship. So it's like really important that people know that we're here to be great women for the community and not for, you know, college. Because um, I think this stuff sticks with us after college, definitely. You know, you're in it for life, not for four years. Um, so I think it's great that we all have values that we all always go back to and can stick to and 
to even express them to people outside our sorority. Um, this is Rebecca. As someone who used to be recruitment chair, I was there for two years. So we, I was also, I'm also alpha class, so I was one of the, fa the founding members of our sorority. So I saw it from day one, and when we chose the girls that we wanted to be in our sorority, we weren't looking at like how fun they are, or like anything like that. It was more like the values that we could see that they possess, which is hard to know within like what a week or two weeks period of time during recruitment. But we have to try and figure that out because that's the kind of people that we want to be surrounded with all the time. And when you're a values-based organization, you need people that can uphold those values. Otherwise, it's not going to work. I have a question, Evan, um, on what you said. Do you think things change in a bigger university? Because you said people know us, they see us, that makes us more responsible when we're walking around and representing. But a place like Penn State or University of Florida, really big schools, do you think the same values apply? Or do the bigger schools, fraternities, sororities, get away from it a little bit? Um, this is Rebecca again. I can say it, it's both yes and no to that. Because like when you start becoming a bigger sorority, yeah, it is hard for people to like like put your face to which one it is. But like as you see in the media, there's a lot of bad press about Greek life. And like one like one person's actions, like a chapter at uh, a southern school just got shut down, and they were the oldest chapter on that campus for what like two or three girls did in their sorority, and like their entire chapter got shut down. Like over a hundred years of alumni that were at that school just not even a part of it anymore. So I think it's both. Yeah, it's it's always going to be values based. So this is Monica. I think. Greek life, um, it obviously is a constant, but at a small school like this where we only have four chapters and then at a big school at Penn State uh, where they have like 30 sororities almost, it's vastly different. Like I think almost here um, it's a little bit less about the social aspect um, just because it is a small school, but at a big school at Penn State it also, it may be more about the social aspect, but it still is value based. Like they still do these rituals and this is how they pick their girls, like they go through when you go down in um, some big schools, like they see like 2,000 girls a night and they are picking these girls out from their values. Like they're obviously like not looking at looks, like they have to take it down. Like how do you compare one girl to the next is by looking at what they do. It's like almost like an inter a job interview, like to get into a sorority. And that's why it's values based. Like if you're going out for a job, you're showing all your best aspects and that's how it is in a sorority. And the sorority continues to shine your best, your best aspects. Um, and it's just big Greek life and small Greek life, we're all the same, but it just kind of is different because we are on a smaller campus and we, you do recognize our faces a little bit more. But at the end of the day, you're always representing your values. Um, this is Amanda. I think um, sometimes at a bigger school, people can kind of lose sight because of, I feel like there's more temptation and more pressure. Um, and they think they can hide behind their larger chapters sometimes. Um, this is just all kind of observation that I've seen um, just through like the media and friends but I think sometimes because we're at a smaller school and our chapters are smaller we have to we're a little bit under a microscope a little bit more um, because there isn't a somewhere we can kind of hide behind and get away with things which I think kind of almost benefits us better because we have to watch our actions because we don't want to ruin something for the whole chapter and get in trouble for something and um yeah i think that uh i lost my train of thought but um <laughs> i just think that because we are smaller chapters it it allows us to really pick the girls that we need we want to have and we don't want to just willy-nilly choose girls which i think that we're all trying to make sure that we do during recruitment yeah, uh, this is Dana, and I think like oh, it's a lot to do with like being here at Philadelphia University. Like, I think the school, like the student body as a whole, are, like really driven people. Like, we have very specific majors. Um, we all do internships. We're like very on task with what we want in life. Um, so I think that reflects a lot in our sorority. And even because our group life is so small, I think we're all really dedicated to like building it up as much as we can. Like, we've come really far. Um, even just us being here like the past three years or for me personally like it's really come a long way and I think we really want to choose people to be in organizations that are just going to help us as a whole in Greek life um, just keep getting better and better and even bigger if we can you know um, how does uh, your chapter demonstrate to others that we are values 
value-based organization. So I guess just like how do you project to the general public who don't really know much about Greek life that you hold values every day? This is Monica. I think one of our best ways we do it is through our philanthropy. Um, we have national philanthropies and then we have our own personal philanthropies that we do on campus. And I think DeFi does the same as they do like ANAD week. Um, and our philanthropies are picked, even when we pick them to do at our school, um, are based on our values, like what we, how we want to help our communities, um, how we want to help the, like our country even, or the world, <laughs> the bigger aspect. But like, um, that's one of the best ways we show it is people seeing us do this service because there is that conception that we're just here to party or something like that. And the way that we, we do so much land to be on our campuses and that's just the best way that you can see what we're doing. And if you ask us why we're doing it, we're gonna respond with our values and those are taught to us at Ritual and they're, yeah, that's what we um, this is Dana. I think service is like a perfect way to describe that as well. Um, like I said, we just had our ANAD week, so we do ANAD and the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation and the DeFi or the Delta Mai Epsilon Educational Foundation. Um, but speaking for ANAD specifically, we just had like our ANAD vigil, so it's kind of just spreading awareness. Um, and it's the first year we did it like camp, like open to the campus. Um, and we had our counseling service this week, and they were so excited to be involved in it and had no idea that we did that even like, to begin with. Um, so it's nice to show people like what we do and what we're dedicated to because sometimes they're even surprised that we want to do that we want to spread awareness and we're really dedicated to our philanthropies um so it's nice when people really take notice of that and see what we can do um, um so <laughs> this is taylor um just going off of what dean said um i think it's really important like the more things you can like connect the campus with with it's going to squash any misconceptions of like what they think we do or like if we're just doing the social aspect so that'll really show people like that we're like doing things much bigger than that, you know. Um, this is Rachel. I'm going to tie that back into what you said, um, and also about just being on a smaller campus in general. I feel like it's easier to show our values because we are a smaller Greek life, and we can more easily show the better things that we do and the good things that we do, and show people that like Greek life isn't always about the stereotypes. It's about this, and it's about this. And I think it's it's. It's better, like I like being on a smaller campus with a smaller Greek life because you can do that and you can show the, the better things that we do and give people a different perception of Greek life. And even, this is Monica going off that, um, Amanda and I got to attend the candlelighting vigil and it was so great. Um, we obviously know all the great um, foundation of DeFi, but getting to go there and be a part of something and it was basically a ritual, they did a ritual at the end, um, being able to be a part of it really showed us their bonds and their sisterhood and just like how great of a story they are and how close they are as a group. Um, they had some really great speakers there and it really just let us in just a little bit more to understand them better. Mm, that's so sweet. <laughs> um, uh, this is Amanda. I think that just the very small things that we can do on our campus, whether it's, you know, doing Relay for Life or this or Anna Week, I think eventually will build up and our campus will take notice and I think they are starting to even just from the three years that I've been here um, it's definitely I've seen a growth and going up in a good positive direction for us generally. What do you think of the worst stereotypes and misconceptions about uh, sororities either on campus or outside of campus? It's kind of a shame sometimes I think because a lot of people don't know like, I know when I first joined State of Biofi, I really didn't know much about sororities. And I think that's because you're constantly seeing the stereotypes and you're constantly seeing the bad press about it. And I wish that the media would kind of take more notice of the positive things that we do. Because we do study hours. We have great GPAs here on campus. We do X amount of philanthropy hours and we do fundraising. And there's nothing like that in the media. And even with, like, bigger chapters, they do even more than we can do. And because of all the the bad press it gets it overshadows it which kind of puts us in a bad light and it's hard for us to sometimes I think it puts a downer sometimes you see like oh this goes again with Greek life you know people are going to constantly think that we're just there to party and socialize with each other right and it's not even the press it's Kristen um it's also the Hollywood movies that like picture us as like the typical like stupid like party girls that don't really think much, but no, like, we're so much more than that, like, 
you're people who have values and are want to be strong women and have goals in life. And um, we do a lot on campus and we want to be involved. And that's what most of us have been is to be involved and to um, be part of the community on campus. Um, and I think that's one of the worst conceptions that people could possibly think of us. Is, and they just can't see it. And it's something that really is overshadowed. Uh, this is Dana. Yeah, it's kind of sad how far stereotypes go and affect people because it even like affects girls. Like I'm sure both of our stories have seen girls that even come out for our recruitment and like expect to be coming to a recruitment event and like having like an amazing time and we're like sitting down talking about our feelings and like <laughs> what we want to do with our lives and like our careers. Um, so it's it's kind of sad how far it reaches. Um, but I think that's why it's even more of a goal for us to prove that wrong and prove the stereotypes wrong. Because um, even during recruitment, like, we talk about the stereotypes and even at, like, um, the summer sessions for the orientation for the freshmen, we talk about them, um, all the work, all the, like, Greek works do. Um, just so that people know that that's not what we're about, that's not what we're trying to do. Um, people, press always wants to talk about bad things rather than good things because people like to hear about bad things and mm-hmm. gossip and all that stuff. So I think that really just enforces us even more to prove them wrong. And I think, uh, this is Monica, going even further, that where these stereotypes were founded from or where you hear the bad things in the press are, um, I know they can blame it on a chapter, but a chapter is built up of people, but usually it is one um, individual. And I know we've all seen this, and it's unfortunate to talk about that sometimes you do pick girls or boys that don't necessarily fit in the chapter because recruitment is a short period of time. And this one person um, who just doesn't take ritual and the values that we talk about and we tried it, instill and build up our um, members with um, and they tear your chapter down um, like we talked about three girls at a chapter or so I don't know how many exactly um, tore down a hundred year old chapter and the press only hears about those three girls but I bet that their president and their ritual chair are amazing people who obviously to get into a position like president takes a lot of leadership qualities and like great grades and you're just not hearing about those people in that chapter you're only hearing about the few bad apples who tore it down and then that creates the stereotype image and you're not hearing about the leaders that they're building um this is rachel i think that stereotypes almost kind of empower me to show everybody that um greek life isn't all about those stereotypes and it's not always like that and everybody that's involved in greek life isn't that type of person um, and I think in general I think it just like empowers your own sorority because you're like oh we don't want to look like that we want to show everybody the good things that we do and that just because one person or you know something happened with one organization it doesn't mean that that defines Greek life. Yeah, I think it's staying again. I think it's great that you say that because even like our chapters alone on this campus both have such stereotypes like attached to them. So that's why I think it's even great like what we're doing right now, like, coming together and rising above that and being stronger than those stereotypes that people want to put on us at this campus or even in the world. So yeah, I just think it's very important that we stand together and even Greek organization as a whole and America. <laughs> <laughs> and this is Monica. I even think it's great that um the reason we're talking here is because of FAMU's Ritual Week. They wanted to bring to light ritual and values within organizations to kind of defy that stereotype that we're talking about. And I think it's great that FAMU is a very large sorority. They have hundreds of chapters throughout the country that have thousands and thousands of girls and alumni. And it's great that they're coming together to defy the stereotype and bring it to light and asking all other sororities and fraternities throughout the country to talk about it too and talk about why we are here and what we're based on and why we continue to be existent, like why you should continue to have Greek life because of the leadership and the values that it can bring in people. Yes, excuse me. I do have a question for the group. Um, so could maybe the seniors who are about to be graduated, could you guys maybe reflect upon what ritual first meant to you when you were being inducted and how that um, thought and how that process has changed or evolved um, now that you're in your senior year? Okay, well, for us, there's only two seniors here, <laughs> Kelsey, but this is Rebecca. Um, we've both been in it since we were founded. We're both Alpha class members. 
Um, the first time I went through a ritual, I was really scared. I thought it was the scariest thing I'd ever been through. I didn't know what was going on. It was also much different because, like, I didn't know. Like, we weren't really established on campus. So, um, but now it's, like, exciting to see, like, other people's reactions. So, I think it's really cool. Um, this is Kelsey, another senior. Um, I think the first ritual just kind of made it official. Like you can say you're a part of the sorority, but it's not until you really step into your first ritual that you really feel a part of it. Um, it's been really cool over the years to see how much we've grown at each ritual. Our group seems to get larger and larger, and that's when you really notice that. Um, like other people touched upon, I think Ritual is just a constant reminder of who you are. It's really easy over the years in college to kind of get lost in different things. And, um, just going back to that reminds you of who you are and what you want to be. And uh, also with that, since we were, this is Rebecca, we, since we were alpha class, not, no one in our sorority had gone through initiation ever. We had to have our nationals come do it, um, which we do it for our members. But since no one had ever been through it, there was like 35 of us that went through it at the same time, which one took really long. And two, like you didn't have anyone to like comfort you, like oh it'll be great. Like we like now we can tell them like it'll be so powerful and important. But none of us had gone through it, so we were all just kind of like we don't really know what this is. So you know. <laughs> I think it just kind of shows the Samantha that, because it's kind of a stepping stone for each of the new member process and other things as well, that um, it just kind of solidifies everything. And I know my favorite part is seeing how we grow each year. Um, even just, like I said, the three years that I've been here, um, it gets bigger and bigger, and it makes me more excited for the new members that we are bringing in and what they can bring to our chapter and the assets they can bring to us. This is Haley. I'm the senior that's here for uh, DeFi. I think the first time we go through ritual, it's a very overwhelming but very rewarding process because I think the first time you go through it, you're so nervous, you almost don't hear anything because you're so excited that you're hearing what they're saying and trying to process it, but you're just so excited to be there. And I think every time you go through another ritual, you hear more and more words. And what we always tell the girls um, is that really listen to what we're saying because that's why we're there. We're there to make that bond. And when you're in ritual with all the girls that are in your sorority, it creates such just an intense feeling. You can feel the bond in the room. Even when we're silent and not specifically saying anything, you can just really feel how much we all mean to each other. And going off even like the last ritual we did, um, there, there was things I've heard, and I, I've heard ritual how many times, and there are so many things that I heard that I can't remember before, and it's just crazy that no matter how many times you go through it, it just, it means something to you different every time, because depending on what you're going through in your life, you might hear different things. Okay, well I'm gonna end on that because that was really great. Um, but I just wanna thank everyone so much for participating. I thought this was, discussion was really great. Um, it was a great start to ritual week next week. Um, so, yeah, thank you. Yay! <laughs> <laughs>